show with what was it again? Say my grace. Am I on? Here it is. Good evening and welcome to Pastoral Talks. I'll be your host this evening. I'm Dr. Ken. With me as always is the uh, prophet himself from Save by Grace, Prophet Thomas. Thank you so much for joining me. And of course, my dear friend, Pastor Ken, drove two hours out to be with us and encourage us and teach us tonight on something prophetic. The prophet is extremely prophetic. He spoke into my life and gave me a lot of tremendous life-changing words the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to bring him on and encourage us and help us. But today I would like to encourage you, the viewer. And that's what we do. It's all about you, the viewer. It's not about how much we know. It's about what God is showing us to encourage you. Amen. So let's start with today. The Jewish calendar is 5779. That's what it is, the Jewish calendar. The Roman calendar, as we all know it here in America, is 2019. What does that mean? I want to start with 9. That's where it's at. 9 also means visitation, but I want to go a little deeper. You've probably heard me say visitation. But I want to show you, it's also a very interesting study. As you study it out in Hebrew, it's a deeper meaning. It actually means about the scripture, when you point it out that way. Nine has several different meanings, but it really means the Holy Spirit. And what that means is we read scripture, we find there's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, and I'll get into that. But I want the prophet to speak into this prophetically. And nine fruits of the Spirit, let me set it up for him, if you will bear with me. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is, you guys already know this, word of knowledge for you at home if you're taking notes, which prophet moves in. The gift of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, of course, that's what he moves in. The gift of faith, the gift of healing, the working of miracles, the discerning of spirits, the ki different kinds of tongues. What is the different kind of tongues? I want to speak into that in a minute. You know, we, when we speak in tongues, that's a heavenly language, and I'll get into that in a minute. Remember when, uh, I don't know if you heard us talk about this, and uh, I'm going off a little here, but it'll help you, I hope. It's in Genesis 8 when uh, Nimrod built the Tower of Babylon, and he was going to uh, glorify himself and the small group of people that he actually raised up. Now, we think, what a mighty army, what a great man of God. No, he was a giant in those days. He he was known as a hunter. He actually killed the wildlife, the big wildlife that was killing all people. But he's also killed the giant, so he was the only one left. He was the mightiest man on earth. That's what the Bible says. And second point is he raised a small group of people that only worshipped him. The rest were slaves. How did they get there? The people got so complacent with God's word, all of a sudden they didn't work. They didn't work. They were in sexual immorality. Now. Uh, you, when you hear that, you think, oh, who cares? This is the modern time. Of course, everybody's sleeping with everybody. It doesn't mean anything. I beg to differ. There's a curse on each and everything in God's Word. It's in Deuteronomy 28. Look it up for yourself. The first 15 are blessings. After that is curses. You can see for yourself what that means. Now, I say all that to say this. When he was, uh, they built the tablet, uh, God himself said to the Godhead, you know, the humans can do any, he complimented them. They can do anything if they unite. Interesting, today is five, which means May is the fifth month, which means grace. Also, today is the first day. What does one mean? Unity. Same thing in the Bible. Right there at that time, they got unity, spoke the same language. They were going to build themselves up, glorify themselves. God says, I'm going to go down and confuse the language and scatter them in different areas. What is the confused language? The different languages we speak today. Now watch this in Acts. He came back and gave us the heavenly language. That's the different kinds of tongues. It is one language that speaks. We all speak in the spirit as believers to our heavenly father. So we're all as one. We're in unity. And our his will is our will. That's when all get done. So I said all that to say this. The ninth one is the interpretation of tongues. Now, prophet, help us, teach us, and, and show us where this helps. The Bible also says that stir up the nine gifts. Now, we, we can stir them up any time. That's what the Bible says. We're allowed to because we're believers. But it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, if you want to look it up for yourself, we can cover the gifts. It says that. And the second one is 2 Timothy 1, 6. It says, stir up the gift of God. So we, God is allowing us to do that. There's nothing new. I want to show you the gifts of the Spirit, Galatians 5, and the prophet's going to turn, will turn him loose. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we have that on top of the power gifts, it's like that's the cake and the dressing or the frosting 
is the nine gifts of the spirit so the reason why i'm saying all this is to unite in god for example i already gave you the example and that, by the way that was in genesis 11 where he started building the tower prophet help us understand this now that we know we have the gifts uh, the, the gifts the fruit of the spirit the nine gifts of self-control etc and we can use the power gifts because we can come with that how does that help us be better believers how does that help us believe for more in christ well it just really helps the individuals out there the the non-believers um, who we come to and um, you know God God puts it in, in, in our heart that um, because we've been saved and because of the change and transformation in us that um, he puts that desire in us to want to share with the individual um, and, and, and through um, our prayers of them being healed it really amplifies their faith I remember right. there was a time when I went into a patient's house who was 80 years old and I asked her I saw um, um, <clears throat> Some, um, some signs that she had Jesus in the house, right? So I asked her, um, may I pray for you? So I prayed for her, and um, a few days later when I came back, she said, you know that day when you prayed for me, um, I felt, I got healed. I got, I felt better. I, I've been following Jesus since I was a little girl. And I've never seen any kind of miracle, but when you prayed for me, I felt better. Hallelujah. And I left my house, and I went to the grocery store, and then she, she told her daughter, she said, there's this therapist that came to see me, and he prayed for me. And then I said, you know what? Um, let's, let's just confirm your relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I prayed with her the sinner's prayer mm. and taught her that every day we put our faith in God, and we talk to Jesus every single day. And um, I prayed that the Holy Spirit filled her that day and so that's what i'm talking about that's what we do that's because good. um freely we receive and so freely we give matthew 10 8, yeah you know prophet you're just so right on did you notice how the prophet didn't build himself up saying it was him led her back to christ here's something interesting in uh, acts 2 2 it says we fill us up in the inner as the holy spirit it's like a wind it's like a rushing wind that's how the apostles got it filled with the Holy Spirit. But watch this, and John or Luke 3, 22, Jesus had the dove or the Holy Spirit. It looked like a dove. It wasn't a really a dove, but it was in the form of a dove. The Holy Spirit was on him. Why? The inner is for us to learn, grow, and mature in Christ, but the outer is for everybody else. As the Spirit falls on us, it says in uh, Isaiah 61, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to pray for the sick, the broken hearted, and heal, and etc. So I say all that to say this, is the prophet blessed her. So not only she knows the Holy Spirit, but she can pray for others. He led her, so he's multiplying on his anointing, even though she's not a prophet like him. But it, he anointed, uh, anointed her with his anointing so she can multiply herself and pray for others. That's what it's about. It's not about you and I. It's for others. Our anointing is for everybody else. That's what the prophet teaches. And you saw his uh, interview about an hour ago. Pastor, let me go back to you. So we understand that we believe uh, sometimes we want to uh, receive this new supernatural power because in Psalms it tells us whatever there's unity, God commands his blessing. So from scattering to gathering, nine also means the end of the cycle. And this is where I want to get to, pregnant with anticipation. So pastor and, and, and uh, expectation it's a brand new cycle that's starting. It's a seed that's in a birthing. Don't you sense in this time, because you've gone through and experienced a lot of death, and I know a lot of people out there, their family members are dying way too young. Can you help us understand why is that happening, and can we prevent it? Well, a lot of that, I believe, is happening through sin. Okay. And the sin takes us from the guy, eyes of God, he, ter he basically turns his back on our sins. So and during that time, it gives an opening for Satan to step in. And what is you know what does Satan do? He steals, kills, and destroys. Mm -hmm. And that's what he that's what he does when you give him the opportunity. He'll step in. He'll take your child through sickness or being hit by a car or whatever. It's because somewhere, maybe the child may not have sinned, but somewhere in the family, somewhere in generation, the gener yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. something, somebody did something, and it took place with 
that person that passed away on you. So what you're saying is generational. If we can break that, and we'll pray and intercede like the prophet instantly knew and discerned that maybe this lady is not moving, you know, with God, is not really understanding God, and kept trying to glorify Him. And He said, "No, no, that's not me. This is the Holy Spirit. Let me give it to you." And He glorified God and built God up. So that way, when the lady moves out and prays, she can do the same thing. That's what you're talking about. Well done. So we receive a whole new level, as the prophet has shown us through testimony, of health, understand provision, understanding, hearing the voice. And maybe the prophet can help us with that. Because I know you out there are tired. You're feeling heavy. And that's the time I don't want you to start giving up. This is a year of expectation and anticipation. This is where our faith will soar because the world is going to change. The kingdom of God is going to advance. We're pregnant with anticipation because God's coming. Prophet, help us. How do we encourage others that it's their season, it's their time to step out and go? Well, I just see that um, um, not only in my life, but I'm hearing because one of the things that we do is that we just kind of observe the people around us, especially the people in the faith, and that when we uh, cling on to individuals who are um, strong in the faith, I mean, that, that's how we grow, but we see their breakthroughs, and then we, we, we celebrate their breakthroughs. And then um, um, I, I'm seeing breakthroughs within my life as well as others. And so um, I'm hearing that. So I, I believe that um, <clears throat> this year is going to be the year that everything that you've sown um, since in the beginning, That's how I teach that. you're going to grow. I mean, it's going to come back in such a way. I mean, God's going to give you ideas. He's going to show you that there are hidden treasures just right right near near and close to you. Um, you don't have to go that far to, to look good. for it. That's I mean, good. even within my own life, um, with the job, with the, the work that I do, God has shown me small ideas of, of how to get um, more work and more provision. And so I, I'm thinking like, how, how in the world did I not think that before? But that's because I didn't ask. But just mm. asking, you shall receive. Um, but Matthew 7, 7, the one ahead. thing that I want to just kind of like... Um, Teach us, go ahead. I want to go back a little bit. Um, to when you were saying that why are people dying so early? Uh, the Bible says that um, um, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, right? right? And so what I'm seeing is that we, there's so much information floating around. I mean, we know what, what to eat and what not to eat, right? Um, all the food that we have, there's organic food and there, there's, there's all that other food. Um, and I understand organic is more expensive, uh, but if you eat the real food, you, have, you don't have to eat that much of it. And so when we teach our kids that and we renew our minds um, to, to, to understand that, then we can be healthier people. Good, um, now, um, there's, there's so much about that. You know, um, um, you know how when you go to McDonald's, there's like um, any size drink for a dollar. But then if you buy water, it's two dollar. There's so many choices that we make every single day. That's good. Teach every that. little thing, every little choice that you make is going mm -hmm. to determine whether you're going to like um, become healthier or, 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 or wealthier or whoever you hang out with, right? So, I mean, these little detailed things that we have to kind of every day, um, the Bible says to die in our flesh. Not only in our flesh, meaning like um, avoid certain things that the flesh wants, the sinful nature and everything, but also, you know, tell yourself, you know, you can you, you got to have limitations. Don't eat a whole pizza. Eat like a slice. Don't eat a whole, um, Good you hard, know, sir. a carton of ice cream. Just eat like a spoonful. You know, so we're mindful. These little things, you know, renew our minds. Change, can, can we have change, the air on, please? Um, change the way we think. Change our thought patterns and everything. And really um, um, trust um, in God and, and ask the Holy Spirit to really teach us how to eat better, to um, to exercise and, 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 and uh, um, really look into more natural remedies and such, then I, I believe that we can be healthier. Like Dr. Kinder, he says, he's been drinking alkaline water, and I drink alkaline water. I mean, water is so essential. Water is the, the one thing that um, us as human beings, we're, we're like 80% water. And so when we drink the right water and we can't eat the right food, then that really supplements our, our, our health, right? And so um, when we do that, these little things, it's going to cause us to be healthier individuals so that we don't, That's good, so sickness don't come, come upon us and that um, we don't um, die before our time. Because what I see is that a lot of individuals go to the doctors and then uh, all doctors can do 
is give you medication. And yeah. medication is basically a band-aid. And there's, there, there's, I mean, you have to understand that with medication, there are always side effects, cause and effects with everything. And so Good you boy. have to be aware of these things. Um, some of the best things that my, my patients do is that to get off their medication. And I'm not saying that um, depending on what your health issues are, but um, if certain medications is making you um, just not, not perform your best or you're sleeping all the time, then maybe if you kind of like come off of it a little bit, you know. Um, see, I, I, I believe um, doctors, I doctors give you the medication, but doctors uh, don't know the side effects that it's going to affect you or not. So you have to be close to your doctor and say, hey, doctor, this medication is making me um, sleep too much or, or, or not eat enough. I'm, whatever it is, got to communicate with the doctor because um, I think that a lot of patients, they see a doctor's, doctor and his degree and just put all their faith in the doctor. And what I'm seeing is that even doctors, um, they're not living as long as people are. And people, wow, that's good. You know, people, they're good living work. long, but they're not healthy. They're, they're living good long, work. but they're like bound to their bed, they're bedridden, you know. Good Sister, work. Um, Pastor Angela over here, you know, she knows, she does hospice, and she she's sees amazing. people just like, just bedridden, and just medication, medication, Very medication. Prophetic. They're surviving, but they're not thriving. And so, um, we just got to use our wisdom, ask God to renew our mind, ask God to teach us, be close to the Holy Spirit, you know, not in just such a religious way, but um, have the Holy Spirit teach you, and, and just be aware of your surroundings, and what you're doing, what you're putting into your body, how you're speaking, speaking life, you know, is so important, right? And so, um, um, continue to, to, uh, to uh, prophesy over yourself, prophesy over your family. Because yeah, I know what, one of my tremendous breakthroughs I have in my marriage is that I remember a few weeks before that, I just, I just like, I don't know what, I believe the Holy Spirit told me just, just to call my sister-in-law and, and, and don't do the usual where I used to complain and say, why is my wife like this and why is my children like that? And the Holy Spirit just told me, you know what, tell your sister you had a breakthrough. And I was like, what? So I told my sister, you know what? My wife loves me now. I love it. We we don't have a problem no more. She understands me now, and, and everything she thought before, right, like right. like she knows it wasn't true. That's good. And I just spoke that, and I felt silly, but I spoke that, and and two weeks later, it came to pass. And so it's just all yeah. it's, it's it's in our mind how we view things, how we think things. When you think wrong, you live wrong. You know, when you think God in a wrongful way, you're going to live a, a, a religious way. You're going to put all kinds of boundaries around yourself, and you're going to be, you, you, you can't pray for people. You People don't want to be around you because you're so, right? And so, and you, you got to find yourself in a place where you just like Jesus. And where Jesus is, things get done. People get healed. People get fed. You know, wherever you are at, I'm saying, you know, trash will be picked up, you know. The spirit of joy is going to be there. It's just... Brilliant idea comes about, and that's how I believe that us believers should be. We carry the glory of God. And so, um, good word, sir. Did you see the prophet mention the, the nine gifts throughout his whole uh, testimony? I thought it was powerful. He talked about joy, he talked about peace, he talked about patience, he talked about kindness. I thought the faithfulness. Did you see how faithful he spoke into my life? I'm a newlywed, I didn't know how to be married. I'm 62. It was a culture shock to me. He spoke into me, he stood with me, he called me every day. Are you okay? What is it? I'll help. He didn't, he listened, and then he spoke into me. He was just giving me words before I even said it. I go, that's what I'm going through. Help me. And he would speak right into me. Self control. He disciplines himself. You think he looks big on in the camera here? You should see him. He's ripped. A lot. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is, he's not doing it for his look. I mean, he's just keeping healthy. What he's trying to teach you is discerning of spirits. He talked about uh, the word of knowledge. He gave it. He gave the gift of prophecy, spoke it into existence. Look how prophetic his message was the whole time he was speaking. Let's close with Pastor. Pastor, help us with this. I see, as we study the Bible and we seek God, like the pastor, prophet was saying, and he already spoke this out, Matthew 7, 7, knock, he will open. Seek, he'll answer. Ask, and he'll give you the answer. So re remember in Romans, or I'm sorry, Psalms 87, 2, I've talked about this quite a bit, and I say for us old folks, the easy to read version, it says he loves the gates of Zion more than he does any other place. What does that mean? We are Zion. So if we meet him at the gate, what is the gate? It's the pearl gate. What is the pearl gate? Remember the clams? That's how they make pearls. Sand gets in there and irritates. Is that you? You're irritated? Are you depressed? 
Are you discouraged? If we will meet the Lord, the King of Kings, at the gate of praise, we praise him at the pearl gate to remind him, look at the suffering. I'm frustrated. I'm irritated. Hell, as we praise him to move us out of it, he's bigger than all that. Jesus' name is above all names. Philippians 2, 9. So if every knee has to bow the name of Jesus, doesn't our complaints, our suffering, as the pastor or prophet said, our marriage just like happened to both of us, or his patience, they received Jesus as he prophetically spoke into him, gave him the gift of life to encourage them. He spoke into him to multiply himself to help others be encouraged and spoken into him as well. So pastor to you, all good things from Zion, the church, Hebrews 12, 22. So if that is all true, how do you see the supernatural experience to, for the people and your testimonies that you've spoken of, of people dying too early and people not coming to the fullness of Christ? Where do you see their shortcomings from? Are they just not really believing the word or are they just seem lost or what do you think of it? Well, a lot of it, as the prophet said a few minutes ago, is their, their lack of knowledge. Good word. Their listening to what's being said but their ears aren't open they're not they're listening but they're not hearing they need to hear they need to hear god in the word that's spoken to them even though their ears may be open they're listening to you mm. but they're not ready to they're not ready to fully hear what's being said to where they can understand it mm, that's powerful Prophet, we only have a few minutes. Could you help us? Matthew 23, 11, you already spoke it out. The greatest among you is your servant. Can you pray for us so we'll learn how to serve like you did that wonderful woman? The testimonies, how you served your wife and all the people. You served me to bring me to a greater understanding of the knowledge of God. Can you pray for the people so they will understand this gift that you have to encourage them to know God greater? You know, it's so important that... Um, we just go out there without fear and just and just serve God. You know, um, every single one of us has a gift within ourselves, and and that gift is given to Good you word. by God. And so it's nothing to boast about. But um, um, like um, like Dr. Ken says, some people um, they 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 don't expose their gift and they don't practice their gift, and so um, it's just it's just kind of hidden, which is uh, very sad. You know, it's like they're, they're, they're living their Christian faith life without a purpose. And so um, I just Good pray that, that you just come out of your, your, um, your fearful nature mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of what people may think about you. Mm -hmm. But just know and experience that the same experience that you have experienced with God, that you faithfully go out there and share the love of God and the manifestation of His glory through your, your words, through your prayers. Um, to all the individuals out there so that when they receive healing then their um, their faith will be strengthened and then um, they will uh, go and talk about this wonderful Jesus uh, that has not only saved them but have healed their body mm -hmm. and so and one by one of That's us it. continue to do that it will spread uh, the, the love of God will continue to spread and then I just pray that every individual out there, um, I declare and decree that your breakthrough and your finance will be coming and it will come in, the, in, the, um, in an idea of, a, of, 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 of something that, 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 that God will, will, will allow you to know within yourself that you are good at, that you do it um, um, to, to, um, to profit um, the provision that you need to, uh, to provide for That's your family good. and to That's sow good. into your kingdom. Because whatever God gives you and bless you with, I believe that we continue to bless um, the, the, our, our family in Christ Jesus um, to advance um, every individual out there because um, um, it, is, it, is, it is something that God puts in our heart to do. And so I just pray um, that God will continually um, teach you that the Holy Spirit will continually guide you in, in, in all, all, all areas of your life and continue to, to go out there and, and to, um, to, to, to speak in a way where people will just receive it and not, and not in a weird way, just, just be, be, be yourself, be That's natural, right. be loving, be kind, build relationships, um, and, 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 and just, be, um, just be a blessing to someone. Because only through a blessing will they receive and, and experience that love of God. And so um, I just pray that, that, that you will be bold 
and to um, to, to share mm -hmm. that truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Good work. What the prophet was saying is this: invest in people. Why? Because that's who God uses. He doesn't have to use anybody, but He does. So we'll invest in people like the prophet did. He prayed for the lady. He asked her to re uh, uh, unite herself with the Lord and with Himself. And that way the miracles start unfolding for her. She doesn't need him. She looks to God. So the point is, if we'll invest in people, that's the biggest point. That's where you're going to get your finances. That's where the provision is going to come. People are going to see the heart like prophet. They're going to start sowing in. They're going to start giving. He's not asking for nothing. He does it freely. I give. Freely I receive. Matthew 10 a. That's a powerful scripture he just gave you. So I want you to understand any your neighbors, your co-workers, people around you at the church, invest in them, they'll invest back into you. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken. Of course, the problem will be with me in 30 minutes. Of course, Pastor Tim will be right back. We'll see you next week on Pastor's Talk. Thanks for watching. Amen.